Well, we were gone 26 days. We were on 15 airplanes. We uh, slept in six different time zones within the first 12 days. We visited 10 cities and five countries. And we saw the Lord do some really marvelous and very humbling things. And I uh, return to our country with a desire to see God work and move amongst us in a new and fresh way. I recognize that much of what we saw God do as we were gone were, it was a direct result of the prayer support and intercessions of this church family. And I want to, from uh, the deepest place in my heart, say thank you. I felt the strength of your ministry, the strength of your prayer support as, uh, as we were gone. We got back uh, Thursday evening shortly after midnight. Thursday we crossed, I'd never done this before, the international date line. And I experienced a 40-hour day, a day that started uh, in uh, a little city. They call it little in China, 2.4 million. Uh, Wai, Wai uh, Waihei, uh, China. Flew to Beijing, and uh, then Vancouver, and then home. The time between the time we got on the plane at 9 a.m. Uh, Thursday morning and landed here in uh, Saskatoon still on Thursday uh, it was 40 hours later and uh, we had been only in airplanes and uh, airports and I slept really good uh, Thursday night <coughs> Unfortunately, last night, the night, Friday night, and last night, I went to bed a bit after ten. That's fairly normal for me, and slept real good till midnight. And last night, I woke up about five after twelve, and looked at the clock till five o'clock in the morning. And then I fell asleep and woke up at five to ten. Now, at five to ten, I've usually been here about an hour or an hour and a half already. So these big panic bells went off. I said, Donna, you've got half an hour to get ready for church. Uh, and she said, not going to happen. Um, so she'll be joining us for the barbecue. Uh, Donna caught a significant uh, bug when she was in Indonesia and uh, just has not recovered from that completely yet. And then uh, Friday, the doctor indicated to her that she also somehow managed to come down with pneumonia. So uh, she needs uh, your prayer support at this time. So we landed in Russia and uh, we were assigned uh, a, the home of a, a uh, single lady to stay in. Uh, I think she's probably in her 60s. Uh, she had been a gymnast in the Olympics, was fine and fit and nimble and uh, invited us to share in her apartment for for the week uh, there was only one significant problem and that is she did not know a word of English and uh, the only Russian word I knew was thank you um, and uh, Donna didn't even have that one down that well but I discovered in those three days my preaching style because I just saw her and Donna communicating over and over again and so this is how I preach you need to understand it uh, if I say something and I don't think you're getting it, I repeat myself. So, poco, poco, poco. Poco, 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 poco. Poco, poco, poco. And all I do is I just keep repeating myself, but I get louder every time. That's what I do. Poco, 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 poco. 
So Donna and her did this for three days straight. They just smiled at each other and said words back and forth, louder and louder, and they actually thought they were communicating. So if I'm getting louder and uh, I'm just saying the same thing over and over again, you need to nod or say something like, yes, I've got it, preacher, good preaching, amen, and I'll move on to the next point. So it was a great revelation for me. Uh, I want us to stand, could we, one more time, and... Uh, I want, us, want to talk this morning about three things that really matter. Three things that really matter. I want us to take some lessons from uh, the church in Antioch because I think there are some great principles here that will help us move forward into a new year of ministry. I'm going to read this to you. Would you follow along with me as I read to you Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Now the word Antioch. In the church that was there, prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Would you raise your hands across the sanctuary and just ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us as we look into God's Word today. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come. I pray for everyone gathered in this sanctuary now. I ask that you would make us open and receptive to everything you want to say to us as individuals today. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Work in our hearts as we look into your word. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said... Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Been pondering this portion for the last month and uh, just allowing the Holy Spirit to, to speak to me. It's the story here of. Uh, the church at Antioch gathering and having a prayer meeting. And the first thing I noticed is that, and, and I don't think anything happens by accident in Scripture. First thing I noticed is that the story does not read like this. There were at Antioch in the church there prophets and teachers. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said. That's not what it says. It says, there was at Antioch, in the church that was there, prophets and teachers. And then it takes the time to individually list them by name. The first thing I want us to understand this morning in church ministry is that people really matter. In the kingdom of God, people really matter. In recording the story of the church at Antioch, the Holy Spirit takes time to list the names of the people. Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manion. List their names and list their names because people really matter in the kingdom of God. I want you to know this morning that you matter. You matter to God and you should matter to the person sitting beside you and you matter to me. In the kingdom of God, People are important. If we ever become just about putting on services and having activities and we forget to genuinely love, for one, love one another and care for one another and bear one another's burdens, we have ceased to be the body of Christ. Church is not something you come to. Church is what you are. 
You are meant and called to be deeply involved in each other's lives. People matter in the kingdom of God. And so, uh, this record of scripture takes time to list the names. Last uh, Tuesday, seems like a millennium ago already, but last Tuesday we landed in uh, Lucas Jong's home city. Lucas has lived with us for the last uh, five years. And he had invited us while we were in his part of the world to come and meet his family and see his home city. He was home on some holidays. We landed in his home city. We got off the airplane and when we got off the airplane uh, we had no luggage but our carry-on. We took our carry-on outside the airplane and we were met by our personal driver who had been assigned to us for our days in that city. Uh, he said, uh, I will be, Lucas interpreted for him, I will be your personal driver whenever you need to go to somebody. I am, I am here to, to serve you. He carried our luggage to his polished, perfectly vacuumed BMW. And so we were driven around way high uh, China for two days in, in a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. When he dropped us off at our five-star hotel that they had booked for us, catch that, that they had booked for us, uh, we met Lucas's parents. They took us up to uh, our room, and then they said, we are going to have a party at five o'clock because we are excited about you being here in China. Our driver arrived at five o'clock in his perfectly clean BMW and took us to a uh, first-class hotel on the other side of the city. And they had reserved a room for us that evening. And we walked into the room, and this is the table that was set for us, and every one of the chairs around that table was about to be fulfilled, filled. And food just kept coming and coming and coming and coming and coming for two and a half hours the only thing that broke up the food was there is a custom in china where they toast their guests and so we were toasted over and over again for two and a half hours and we discovered that we were really wonderful people <laughs> <laughs> they had just met us, so it wasn't hard to fool them. But they really appreciated that we had invested in Lucas's life for five years. And Lucas's parents had invited all of their significant friends to join us for that evening and make sure that we knew we were appreciated and we were honored. They made us feel important. People matter in China. People need to matter in the kingdom of God. People need to matter in the kingdom of God. And so they toasted us for two and a half hours. There was one man there who was convinced I should have the first beer of my life while I was there. And he poured me my beer and uh, Lucas explained to them that I don't drink. And uh, then they got really concerned that no Christians drink and I got an opportunity to explain what a Christian was. It actually worked fairly well, but I drank an awful lot of Coke that night. And most of them left drunk, but they were happy. <laughs> Landed in Indonesia and uh, we were told on Saturday night that we were going to a youth rally. When I heard youth rally, I, I heard uh, in my mind 60 kids, maybe 80 kids. If it was really, I thought we have 150 kids. I pulled up. Uh, we were <coughs> in, a, in, a, in a bus of, with some other Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada preachers, pulled up to the church that Saturday night, and there were at least just lined up like this at least 300 motorcycles on the parking lot and I knew that we weren't coming to just 60 kids youth rally and uh, there were I would say between a thousand and twelve hundred teenagers at that youth rally 
But I, I say this to say this, and then I'll say something else. Uh, when I when I arrived at uh, that church service, before I could get into the sanctuary, I had at least 100 teenagers shake my hand and welcome me to welcome me to that service. I'm talking about teenagers shaking my hand and welcoming me, me to the service. They understood in Indonesia that people matter in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, people matter. <laughs> It was neat, and I'm going to talk about this trip in, in detail next weekend, but it was neat to see about a hundred kids come forward at the end of that service and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Many of them were baptized the next evening. People matter in the kingdom of God. You matter in the kingdom of God. Our guests to our services every weekend matter in this church. We need to make them feel honored. We need to make sure we're going out of our way to make them feel important, going out of our way to get to know them. People matter in the kingdom of God. That's why we have life groups, because people matter in the kingdom of God. Church is not something we just come to once on the weekend. Church drives us. Church, being part of the kingdom of God, motivates us. We're deeply concerned about making a difference in people's lives. People matter in the kingdom of God. Second thing I noticed in this story is that uh, they were ministering to the Lord. When I got on the plane leaving uh, China on Thursday morning, I was slightly embarrassed because I'm sitting in a window seat and uh, I've done enough flying now that Air Canada actually gives me good seats for some reason. I'm grateful. Had an exit aisle, had lots of room for my feet, but I'm sitting there and uh, tears start rolling down my cheeks as I realize I have seen a church for the last four weeks that is so passionate about Jesus. And tears are rolling down my cheeks. And I say, oh God. Would you give us that kind of passion for you in our land? Would you make us passionate about you and your work once again? You see, I fear that... uh, We've lost some, a sight of something as a church. And I'm not talking about us, but I am talking about us. But I'm talking about us. If you need interpretation for that, somebody can help you. I fear that we have become satisfied within the church context in North America of ministering to each other making sure everybody's fine, encouraging one another, caring for one another, (laughs) uh, lending, helping, borrowing, whatever is needed as situations come up, forgiving one another, being kind to one another. We, We minister to each other. And God help the church and God help the preacher who when you leave a service on Saturday night or Sunday morning, if you don't leave and you feel like you've been ministered to because I'm not going back there, they don't minister to me. We expect to be ministered to and we want to minister to each other. But I think we've lost sight of probably what is our highest calling. And that is the kingdom of God is identified and marked as a group of people who minister to the Lord. The kingdom of God is a group of people who minister to the Lord. (laughs) 
we get a hint in this portion of what that looks like. How did they minister to the Lord? They gave themselves to prayer. They gave themselves to fasting. I have people tell me, well, I, but, but, I, I can't pray, Pastor. I know some people can pray really spiritually, but, but I can't pray. I go to pray, and after a minute and a half, I can't think of a single thing to say anymore. So I, I just get, why don't you just go sit in the Lord's presence and tell him you love him? <laughs> Minister to him. That is our highest calling. I don't like fasting. Well, fasting's not about you. Fasting is ministering to the Lord. One of the things I saw consistently in Europe and in Asia is when the song leader would end. Uh, I, I, I know what happens in North America. The song leader finishes a song and everybody looks at the song leader and says, well, 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 well why don't you get going? What's, well, get going with the next song. In Europe and Asia, what I consistently saw was when the song ended, worship broke out in the house of God. Worship broke out. And I'll show you some clips next weekend, Lord willing. But they would just, out of their heart, something deep inside of them, would, they, their high hands would be raised and their hearts would be raised in worship and adoration. They got something. They understood, and I fear we've lost it in North America. They understood that we were a people who are designed, meant to be ministering to the Lord. I had the privilege of attending the Pentecostal World Conference in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And while I was there, the uh, largest Pentecostal church in Kuala Lumpur dedicated their new building. Seats 10,000 people. The guest uh, speaker that night was uh, Dr. Paul David Yonggi Cho. I had the privilege of sitting under the ministry of this great leader from Seoul, Korea. He's 78 years of age. He has retired as the pastor of the church he started in the 50s that is now the uh, biggest church in the world. I lost track of how many members they have when they got to a million. He's taking this time off and he came to Kuala Lumpur to speak. He said, I'm taking a few months off here. I'm retired to figure out what the Lord wants me to do. I think he wants me to start another church. He knows what he's living for. He said when he, uh, after he was miraculously healed... Uh, after be having been given a bi Bible and beginning to read it after he was miraculously healed in the 1950s from uh, serious uh, last stage tuberculosis. Uh, he felt God call him to start a church and he said, God, I don't know what to do. And he said, this is what God said to him. He said, you don't work. He said this in a... Korean accent, you don't work, you pray, and I will work. You don't work, you pray, and I will, you don't work, you pray, and I will work. An understanding that <laughs> the Christian life and the Christian walk is one of ministering to the Lord. kingdom of God, people matter. In the kingdom of God, we minister to the Lord. And then uh, the last uh, thing I saw in this portion is this was a church on mission. Notice what they were gathering to pray for. They were gathering to pray to send Barnabas and Saul away <laughs> to do ministry. 
was a church on mission. And the kingdom of God is meant to be made up of people who are on mission. There's a world that needs Christ. And we are not meant to just come together and sing songs and hear sermons. We are meant to be difference makers. We are meant to be world changers. We are meant to be salt in the world. We are meant to be light in the world. The early church was a church on mission. And what really matters, what really matters is that we remember that people matter. And number two, that we remember that we are meant to be a people who are ministering to the Lord. We need to minister to Him. And uh, lastly, we need to, as a church, be a church on mission. I uh, have wanted for a number of months to watch the movie 42, which is the story of Jackie Robinson. When I got on the plane to go to Moscow, on uh, August 11th, I think it was, I saw that it was one of the options of movies I could watch on the overseas flight to Moscow. And I said, I'm going to do that. But I fell asleep and uh, totally missed it. Uh, so on the way back from China on Thursday, uh, it was still an option. And, and I listened to the story of, of Jackie Robinson. 1946. There were 400 professional ball players in the United States. Every single one of them was a white Caucasian. And a guy by the name of Branch Ritchie decided that enough was enough and it was time to break the color barrier. He decided that uh, he was going to uh, invite Jackie Robinson to come and play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He understood there would be an uproar. I don't think he understood or expected it to be as big an uproar as it turned out to be. They were well into the season. Uh, there was discord throughout the whole league because there was now a black person playing baseball. One day, Branch Ritchie's phone rang, who was a, an executive officer with the Brooklyn Dodgers, and on the other line was a man named Herb from the Philadelphia Phillies. Excuse the language here, but it was the language of the time. Thank God we're in different times now. But Herb on the other end uh, talked to Branch and said, how long have you known me, Branch? Branch said, I've known you for 20 years. He said, well then, as a friend, I need you to do me a favor. I want you to make sure that Negro doesn't come and play baseball in Philadelphia tomorrow. And uh, Branch Ritchie replied, that man's name is Jackie Robinson. That man's name is Jackie Robinson's name. People's names matter. People matter in the kingdom of God. He says, well, I know he's got a name, but I want you to know that if that Negro comes and plays ball tomorrow, my team will not be in the stadium. We are not going to show up if you bring him. And uh, the discussion goes back and forth, and finally Branch Ritchie asks Herb on the other end, he says, does God love baseball? Does God love baseball? Important theological discussion for our Bible college to grapple with this year. I leave that up to our academic dean to figure it out. And Herb said, uh, what's that got to do with anything? And uh, Branch Ritchie, who is a Methodist, said this to Herb on the other end. He said, you need to remember that one of these days you're going to stand before the Creator God. And I hope when the Creator God asks you why you didn't put your ball team on the field in Philadelphia tomorrow, that you'll be able, when you say to him that you refused to put your team on there because there was a Negro who was going to play, that you think that'll be a sufficient answer. I guarantee you it will not be a sufficient answer change the ball, <laughs> change the face of athletics, change the face of North America. Probably that one statement, one a day for people of all cultures, and we thank God for it. But I don't think we think often enough about the fact that all of us, one day, are going to stand before Creator God. All of us. And we're going to have to give account for how we've lived our lives and how we've spent our time and what our priorities have been. 
Have people really mattered to us? Have we been adequately ministering to the Lord? Have we been a people on mission? We'll have to give account. And friends, some of our excuses and some of our reasons for not being what God has called us to be, and oh, what potential there is in this house, but some of the reasons for not being what we're called to be just will not be sufficient answers when we stand before our Lord and our Maker. We need to be a people marked and characterized by being on mission for the Lord Jesus Christ, a people who are anxious and desirous to make a difference in North Saskatoon and beyond. We, friends, have a message that can change the world. We have a message that changes the eternal destination of men and women around the world. We must be on mission.